In order to access the Lambda function from your Mendix app, you don't have to configure the AWS. <laughs> Hello everyone, what's up? And welcome back to Hello AWS. Today, we're gonna have a little fun using the AWS Lambda connector. I thought a cool way to try it out would be to outsource the logic for a Dungeons and Dragons dice rolling app, where Lambda would generate the random numbers for each roll of the dice. Lambda is a compute service that lets you run code without provisioning or managing servers. Basically, it lets you run logic without setting up an entire server, which is great for when you need a single function for something, but don't want the hassle of creating an entire app for it. In order to access the Lambda function from your Mendix app, you don't have to configure the AWS authentication connector, but you will need it downloaded into your app. The Lambda connector calls the authentication for you. So instead you should configure authentication in the Lambda folder in the connection details folder. So make sure to have all of your constants filled and it should work. In the connector, you will have to choose between static or session-based credentials. If you need a refresher on how these work, you can check back to my first piece on authentication. As in the first piece, I opted to use session-based credentials, which means in order to do that, I created a trust anchor and a profile for the application. I've also attached AWS Lambda role under permission policies for the role and under trust relationships, you must apply a custom trust relationship using JSON to allow the role to assume the roles for roles anywhere and Lambda as shown here. To get started, we're going to log into the AWS Developer Console and navigate to the Lambda Functions Overview. We're gonna click Create Function and we'll get started. Now, this is going to be a really simple implementation and I'm basically going to copy the Hello World Blueprint and all I need the service to do is respond with a random number, which is constrained by the number of sides on the dice which is being rolled. For example, the D20 dice will return a number between one and 20 and so on for each type of dice. The actual steps are very easy, so let's go through them and set this up now. To create the Lambda functions, I'm going to keep it simple. A separate function for each type of dice, which will generate a random number constrained by the maximum value of each dice. To make the functions, I'm going to use the Hello World Node.js boilerplate and then paste in this code over here. Remember to give your function a name and click create function. Make sure your Lambda function is deployed before you test it. For a much more in-depth guide to creating a Hello World Lambda function, go to this tutorial in the AWS Resource Center. Next up, we can move to Studio Pro and finish the setup in my Mendix app. So let's go into the marketplace and we'll search for Lambda to look at the module. Let's take a look at the actions here. We have the actions listed here and I'm going to be using the invoke function to call the Lambda functions. Next, we need to call the invoke function action from the connector in a microflow. So here's my microflow over here. So this action expects two parameters to work. It needs the entity invoke function request and the AWS region as an enumeration. I'm going to create the invoke function request using a create action and create it with some of its attributes. So it needs a function name, which I will set to D20. And I'm gonna set invoke a asynchronous to false. And I will be providing a empty payload, uh, which is just some empty quotes. I also create a variable of AWS region to pass in the invoke action. If you have multiple AWS modules in your app, make sure you create these with the correct enumeration. Most of the modules have a region enumeration and they are incompatible if you choose the incorrect one. After that, I store the result and use a data source on the page to retrieve the image of the correct dice. Now I'm going to run my app and see what happens when I trigger this. Okay, here is my app's login and I will go to the Lambda connector. Now, when I click the D20, it triggers my breakpoints. And if I go in here and continue and return to my browser, you can see the value has updated and displays correctly. That's all for this video. 
I hope you enjoyed having a bit of fun with AWS Lambda and Dungeons and Dragons. Until next time, I'm Ryan Mockey, and this is Hello AWS. Thank you.